She was meant to be the next Mariah. But did she end up being another victim of the industry? Let's talk about it. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you like hearing stories from the 90s, or in this case, the mid 2000s, subscribe. Let's get into it. Leona Lewis is a British singer from London. She rose to fame from The X Factor, where she won season three in 2006. She became the first woman to win the show. The X Factor was by no means her introduction into the industry. She had already recorded two demo albums and had gone on other auditions. You would think an artist of her calibre, of her level of talent, would have no problem breaking into the industry, but that was not the case. It was by no means easy at all. Part of the reason she felt the need to audition for the show in the first place. A lot has come out about The X Factor over the years, including information from former contestants. There have been allegations of fixing, or at least having their favorites, and also allegations of racism. Many believe shows such as The X Factor have basically destroyed the music industry and have put reality TV above music and talent. Many believe such shows are career destroyers. In other words, if you go on shows such as The X Factor or American Idol, you end up being a reality TV star as opposed to a serious recording artist. And at times on The X Factor, the judges made terrible decisions in their choice of songs for the artists. A Kelly Clarkson song might not be the best choice for a neo soul singer. And they did seem to make it about who could hit the highest notes, who could sound like Whitney or sound like Mariah. Rather than helping the singer find their unique voice, it became more about sounding like someone else, which is why many call such shows glorified karaoke contests. But with all the criticism shows like The X Factor has received, it's singers like Leona Lewis who come along every so often, who help validate the show. I would just like to say I am possibly the most proudest person in the world right now. And for anyone who says shows like this don't pr uh, produce talent. <laughs> if it wasn't for shows like The X Factor, talent such as hers would go undiscovered. Tragic. Tragic. Leona was born in 1985. She has two brothers and is a middle child. She is mixed race. Her mother is white with Irish and Welsh ancestry, and her father is black with roots from Guyana. She was born in Highbury, Islington, and was also raised in Hackney. Her mother was a social worker and her dad worked for a youth offending team. So even before the age of five, her parents realized that she had a talent for singing and they decided to send her to performing arts schools. She began at the Sylvia Young Theatre School, which was also attended by Emma Bunton from the Spice Girls and Amy Winehouse. Today, fees start at £5,000 per term. Then she attended the Italia Corti Academy and also won a place at the Brit School in Croydon, where Adele and Amy Winehouse also attended. The Brit School was the only free performing arts school in London at the time. When Leona was 13, she won a talent show at Hackney Empire. After leaving secondary school, she worked in Pizza Hut as a waitress. Then she got a job as a receptionist in a solicitor's office. This was the job she was doing at the time of auditioning for The X Factor. She said she would use her earnings from her receptionist job to pay for her studio time. Leona said she never pursued any other career other than music. Her first album that she recorded was called Twilight in conjunction with Spiral Music, a production company. But this album failed to get her a record deal. If it had, she would have been disqualified from auditioning from The X Factor. Years later, after she won The X Factor, this album surfaced. The show was strictly for amateurs and you couldn't be someone who was previously signed to a label to audition for the show. And there were some whispers about whether that was the case. At one point, she was also signed to UEG Entertainment, where she recorded the album Best Kept Secret. They reportedly said that they spent £70,000 in launching her career. 
but nothing materialized. So she really did try and have many opportunities to break into the industry. But despite all those efforts, she was unsuccessful at that point. A year before The X Factor, Leona did have some minor success in the underground music scene where her song Private Party was circulating, which I think is much cooler. It wasn't easy for her parents to fund her schooling and it was reported that they spent £80,000 in doing so. Leona's mother said, we had to fund the stage schools ourselves and we really struggled as we're not rich, but we did it because it was what Leona wanted. Singing is all she ever wanted to do and there has never been any other option for her. Explaining why she auditioned for The X Factor, Leona said, I tried to secure a record deal by doing things my own way. I worked very hard, but I never managed to land a contract. That's why I decided to audition for The X Factor. It's programs like these, which provide the best place to showcase fresh new talent. Having gone to performing arts school, Leona was no stranger to having vocal training. Good singers get vocal training too, and treat their voice in the same way an athlete would treat their body. Even to prepare for her X Factor audition, she did work with a couple of vocal coaches. She didn't just walk off the street and decide that she wanted to audition in the way that some people seem to have done. When Leona was eight years old, her parents approached renowned vocal coach, Janet Edwards, who worked with Leona from 1993 to 2003. She clearly had a great support system around her and parents who believed in her, and it's because of them she is where she is today. Edwards told The Guardian, I met them and said, well, Leona is obviously bright and enthusiastic, but she's only eight. She has to have fun with music first. So I recorded some little backing tracks for her on piano and said, you go off, have fun with these, and maybe I'll see you in six months. That's how it all started. Eventually, I saw her each term at my place and our work escalated. By 13, 14, it was evident that she would be a professional. Whatever genre I gave her, she applied herself. She was then what she remains now, a hard worker, not a pushy little girl. I was aware she was going to try for the X Factor. Some parts of the industry already knew who she was. Her parents thought I would hate the idea, but this was 2006. The record industry was starting to suffer from the effects of the internet. So I said, go for it. It was an extraordinary experience for her. But what the viewers were actually seeing was a proper musician, someone who knew how to deal with everything. There were a lot of people out there who think they can achieve the same thing with no work at all, but they can't. The owner shows how good you can be with proper practice. We hear stories such as Mariah's handing her demo to Tommy Mottola and him driving home and listening to it in the car and running back. Where is she? Where is she? I've got to find her. There's Ray walking into Sony and handing off her, her demo tape and it actually being heard by somebody. But for Leona, that wasn't the case. So again, even her vocal coach agreed that X Factor was really her best chance. And people did say that the internet did hurt the industry. Record companies weren't making as much money. People weren't buying CDs anymore, buying hard copies. They would rather download songs from illegal websites. And that did greatly affect the revenue of a lot of big labels. So maybe they weren't signing as many artists or paying their artists as much. Leona's biggest success though, before winning the X Factor, was winning the lead role in a production of The Lion King in Disneyland Paris. She had a six month contract, but sadly she had to pull out from the production because she had an accident while ice skating, hurting her back and being bedridden for a month. Her mother Marie said, she had a six month contract and was over the moon about getting the part. When she had the accident and hurt her back, she was heartbroken and couldn't do anything for a few weeks. It was a big knock for her, but she was determined it wouldn't put her off. Leona never gave up on her dream. She believed in herself and she stayed determined despite all the setbacks. And it was going on the X Factor that was part of her not giving up on her dream. Leona was 21 when she auditioned for the X Factor. Many people don't realize that before you stand before the judges on TV, you have to go through a number of auditions before you get to the real audition. Most don't even make it to the judges audition. You have to be either really good or really bad. 
and make great TV either way. He's drowning my pain with his fingers. He's singing my life to his palsy. He will be so. Oh, oh, remix, killing me softly. Kill him, kill him, kill him. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Aye, So Leona walks in. And the judges noticed how shy she seemed. She sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. You got the whole package, I think. Well, it wasn't perfect, because she fell off the melody at certain points. I think that was the one and only time in the entire competition where they said something slightly negative about her singing. And each performance after that was practically perfect. And it was obvious from quite early on that she was likely to win. People were wondering, could this be the next Mariah? and they gave her Mariah and Whitney songs to sing, setting her up to be regarded in the same light as them. There were some concerns. It was believed by Simon that perhaps the women wouldn't vote for her as they usually vote for the male contestants. And her mother expressed concerns about her not winning the competition due to her mixed race heritage. All of these worries were completely unfounded as Leona ended up winning the competition with 8 million people voting and she won overwhelmingly with 60% of the votes. And Gary Barlow had some strong words for Simon Cowell. Don't screw this up. Do you know what, both contestants are brilliant, but I have to say, Leona and Simon, this is to you, mate. You've got a big responsibility because this girl is probably 50 times better than any contestant you've ever had on this show. And it's your responsibility to make her the best record you can. I remember one competition where he said, you know, don't give her an album of covers. And you know, with these shows, they rush out an album that not much thought has been put into. It's not in the best interest of the artist. It's more about capitalizing off of the TV show. And to be honest, when I heard that her first single was gonna be a moment like this, that was also sung by Kelly Clarkson, I thought, oh, here we go. But the single did extraordinarily well and broke several records. It broke the world record for the fastest selling download ever. There were 50,000 downloads in 30 minutes. Of course, it was the Christmas number one. It was number one for four weeks and it sold half a million copies in the first week alone. Leona won a one million pound contract with Simon Cowell's label, Psycho. But launching in America was the real goal. Simon took Leona to Oprah. And when I saw her perform on that show, that was it. I knew she was gonna be big. Simon says that there's a new woman in his life who caught his ear. Let's take a listen at that. Wow. Whoa. So that was not American Idol. That was, in fact, the X Factor, the London show. Tell us about that kind of talent. Well, I, I've got to be honest with you, Oprah. I mean, I'm fairly cynical um, and uh, <laughs> never in my wildest dreams did I believe that we would get, certainly in the UK, a singer as good as this girl. And uh, she just blew the whole country away. Um, Her name's I, Leona. I, I honestly think one of the best we've ever had from, from this country, I've got to tell you. After appearing on Oprah, Leona's success was basically set in stone. She signed a $9.7 million deal with Clive Davis, Whitney's mentor. She signed with J Records, Clive's label. He was no longer with Arista after being ousted in 2000 and replaced by L.A. Reid. And you know Clive Davis's pre-Grammy parties are huge and Leona got to perform at one of these pre-Grammy events in 2007, the year her album was released in America. Well, it was released worldwide, confirming her status as Clive's new protege. I can't say that word. <laughs> the way they handled Leona's career was unprecedented and they treated her like a global star from day one. The press release said the following, Clive Davis and Simon Cow announced they will partner together to supervise the much anticipated international debut album by 21 year old British singing sensation Leona Lewis, the first female winner of Britain's top rated television show, The X Factor, which will be released on Psycho 
Stroke J Records, both recognised as industry giants, Davis and Cow will work together in a first of its kind partnership on both song and producer selection for Lewis's eagerly awaited first CD. Lewis will also be the first winner of a major television talent show on either side of the Atlantic to be given a major global launch with the release of the CD. Leona is so talented that when she showcased for our best songwriters in LA, right before the Grammys, she received a tumultuous reception. Simon Cow and I will have a great time working together on her album. Leona is one of the most gifted singers I have ever come across, and it's an honor to work alongside Clive, stated Simon Cow, American Idol judge and the creator and producer of The X Factor. Cow also serves as one of the judges on The X Factor, which is the biggest entertainment show across Europe. Born and bred in London, Leona has already broken several records in the UK since she was proclaimed the winner of The X Factor in one of the most watched television events in Britain. Within hours of the announcement, Leona's single was made available online and set a world record for downloads by selling 50,000 copies within 30 minutes of its release. The download also became Britain's largest download in one week. Also, the single reached platinum status and sold over 600,000 copies in its first week of release, topping the UK charts over the Christmas holidays. The single also topped the Irish pop charts and Lewis became the UK's fastest selling debut female artist of all time, breaking a record previously established by Britney Spears in 1999. Both Davis and Cow will have direct personal involvement with Leona's first project, a major global launch, an album release from the UK's latest young hit maker, which is planned for late summer 2007. So it's safe to say she was really hyped up. No wonder people thought she was going to be the next Mariah or the next Whitney. And anybody who had heard her sing knew she had an amazing voice. But the difference with Mariah and Whitney is as well as the voice, they had amazing songs. And Mariah is an amazing songwriter. So it's not just about the voice. So her debut album, Spirit, was released in 2007 with much anticipation. She had the opportunity to work with top producers and songwriters such as Neo, Dallas Austin and Stargate. It was the fastest selling album in the UK and Ireland, topping the charts in both countries. And it was the best selling debut album in the 21st century. And the reviews were pretty good, but it wasn't for everyone. One critic, Stephen Thomas said, rightly impressed by Lewis's multi-octave voice, reminiscent of a warmer, earthbound Mariah Carey. Cal continued his mentorship after the conclusion of the show, making her the first contestant in the whole Idol Factor enterprise that he personally shepherded through the major label process. He struck a deal with Clive Davis, the executive producer behind all the American Idol projects, the producer who publicly bristled when Kelly Clarkson tried to take control of her career through her original compositions. And the two launched a grand plan to break Lewis in her native UK first, then slowly roll her out in the US a few months later via an appearance on Oprah. So there he hints at a typical problem within the industry that once an artist wants to take control of their career, Many of the executives don't care too kindly for it. Then he goes on to say, unlike most Idol Factor alumni, Lewis can hit those big notes, but make it seem easy, never straining her voice and building nicely to the climax. Unlike most divas, there was a human quality to her voice as she's singing to the song, not singing to her voice. Then again, this was also true of Mariah Carey on her 1990 debut, which spirit greatly resembles in how the handful of R&B orientated songs camouflages how this is almost entirely a stuffy middle of the road pop record. Not only that, but spirit is so old fashioned. It sounds as if it could have been released in 1990 
and compete with Mariah's debut for the top of the charts. Her first single, Bleed in Love, opens with a crawling organ that recalls the muted gospel or vision of love. Even if the skin crawling lyric, you cut me open and I keep bleeding love, wouldn't have suited the top 40 in 1990. The lyrics were really weird to me. <laughs> I agree with Stephen on that one. So he points out how songs such as Forgive Me and Mrs. Glass were kind of more up-tempo in order to appeal to the American market. But by no means was Leona going for a Beyonce type of vibe. You wouldn't see her twerking in any of her videos, for example. Stephen pointed out that none of the songs on the album had beats that obscured Leona's voice in any way because the point of the album was to showcase her voice. In a similar way to Mariah's debut album, which had the same purpose. Now further on in Mariah's career, you would notice that showcasing her voice and her vocal ability wasn't a top priority as it was to make songs with catchy beats and club friendly songs. She even wasn't afraid to change her singing style to a more breathy tone that suited the R&B and hip hop type of music at the time. I do think Mariah's debut showcased her voice a little bit better Mariah had huge gospel ballads that really showed the power behind her voice. But you didn't feel that Mariah's album was just to showcase her voice. She wrote most of the songs herself and that every song had a message and had a story behind it too. So that really had an impact with her fans. Now, people always say, you know, why compare two female artists? Don't pit one against the other, especially on my videos <laughs> for some reason. But the reality is with Leona's career, that's how she was presented to the world. I mean, it's obvious that her first album was inspired by the sound of Mariah's debut album and even the cover, it had a very Mariah feel to it. So naturally people are going to compare and especially with the vocals as well. That's a given. So Leona has a beautiful soprano voice and a killer falsetto, which she showcased on the show. But Mariah's vocal range is wider because she can sing very low too. Mariah is also known for singing in the whistle register, which in the early days especially, she made look effortless. Mariah herself was asked about Leona in a similar way she was questioned about Ariana Grande. Speaking to the Observer monthly music magazine, Mariah said, Honestly, there has been so many. This is a new her. And I'm like, okay, show me the new her. Can she come and work for me and be my double? And I'm not particularly talking about this girl, Leona, because I only heard her once and I didn't really hear a true similarity, particularly in the style of music. It is what it is. And critics have compared me to so many people who are not really singers and they're certainly not songwriters. If I was to focus on the comparisons and really dwell on that, it would bring me down. So I just try to pray that I lose the spirit of jealousy. It's not a good one. Envy is a really powerful thing. During the X Factor, as perfect as Leona was, she did face some criticism. Some people described her as boring, which I thought was pretty harsh. But the reality is, people like some edginess to their artists. And with the short attention spans people have these days, artists have to change it up every so often. Doing everything by the book, isn't appreciated as much in the music world. And that could have been the judges drumming up negativity for ratings, which is why these shows aren't usually the best avenue for people who want to be serious music artists. Now it's not uncommon to hear about artists clashing with their record labels because they want more autonomy and singers who go on the X Factor who think they're going to write their own songs and have control over their careers are soon disappointed. 
They usually don't earn as much money as they think they're going to earn, and they certainly don't own their masters. Especially for those who come from TV shows, such as The X Factor or Make in the Band, we've seen it time and time again. You basically have to be so grateful to be there in the first place that you do everything they tell you to do. And if you don't, they can easily replace you. But for the first time, Simon realized that not only was Leona fortunate to have the X Factor, the X Factor struck gold when they found her. It was artists like Leona who helped validate the show and ensure that people took it seriously. Plus in those early days, Leona probably didn't rock the boat or put up much of a resistance to Simon and the label, unlike Mariah. Stephen Thomas from All Music points this out, ending his review saying the following, the stultifying adult contemporary atmosphere may make spirit stilted, but it's also a savvier move as you could expect from Cow. Ever since Mariah long ago abandoned AC for the clubs, there has been a gaping need for a vocalist like Leona Lewis, a singer who can belt it out, but is safe and tame. Having no interest in the perks of stardom that exists beyond the stage. And boy, is Leona Lewis ever that. She is blessed with a terrific voice, but very little on record personality. Something the very professional, very inoffensive tunes emphasize. Ouch. So he's kind of co-signing this idea that she wasn't edgy enough, I guess. Thanks to this collection of calculatingly commercial tracks, tunes crafted to appeal to everyone, yet no one in particular, Lewis merely comes across as the most talented and most willing singer to ever play Cal's game. So no wonder he loves her. But this also points out the big difference between how Cal has taken Leona Lewis under her wing and how Tommy Mottola watched over Mariah. Mottola married Kerry, having both an emotional and financial stake in her career. But those mixed emotions help obscure the machinery that drove her career. And that's too bad, because spirit surely reveals a singer who has a richer tonal quality than any diva to come along in the past 15 years or so. If she had gotten the tunes to match her voice, this would have been a killer record in addition to the international blockbuster that it was so carefully crafted to be. So could that be the core reason why she didn't necessarily go on to become the next Mariah Carey? Perhaps the music she was given played it too safe. Mariah herself shook things up a bit throughout her career. She broke away from Columbia Records and Tommy Mottola started to collaborate with rappers. She even began to dance in her videos. She wasn't the best dancer, but she gave it a go. Years later, Leona did make a stand for her career and did speak up. And that's when she finally parted ways with Simon. Leona has always simply been herself and didn't compromise who she is. Other artists have lost themselves in the industry to reach the ultimate success. And many have paid a high price. She's an animal rights activist. She's been a vegetarian since she was in her early teens and she just has a reserved personality. She said she is reserved and may seem shy at first, but people usually get the wrong impression of her. I think when people see that you are shy or even just calm, collected and reserved, they think you could be pushed around, made to do everything they want. But that's definitely not true of me. The people closest to me know that's not the case. They know I'm not a pushover on people saying that she was shy on the show, she said. But I don't think I was that shy. I was more reserved and quiet. It's just the way I am. It takes me a while to come out of myself and to get to know people. And there's a lot of people who can relate to that. There's certainly nothing wrong with being shy or reserved. Some of the greatest artists and performers of all time are very shy and quiet when they're off stage. Spirit went seven times platinum in Ireland, 10 times platinum in the UK, and platinum in the US, and in several different countries. It was the fastest selling debut album in the UK until 2009, when Suzanne Boyle, another reality TV star, came along with her album, I Dreamed a Dream, beating that record. The album remained number one in the UK for seven weeks 
and reach 1 million sales in 29 days, making it the fastest album to sell 1 million copies by a solo female artist in the UK. It was the second biggest selling album of 2007 in the UK, behind Amy Winehouse's album, Back to Black. It reached number one in the US on the Billboard 200, selling 205,000 copies in the first week. Leona was the first British female solo artist to reach number one in the US with a debut album in over 20 years. Sade was the previous British singer to do that in 1986. So look, the album did really well. I think it's safe to say that. Another odd thing about Leona's career is that she has never won a Brit Award, despite being nominated several times. She was nominated for three Grammys in 2009, but she didn't take home any. But she has won two Music of Black Origin Awards in the UK. Not winning a Brit Awards is quite surprising. And to me, it kind of seems like a snub. Is it because she came from, you know, a TV show? Leona's second album, Echo, was released worldwide in 2009. She worked with Justin Timberlake, who was on the song, Don't Let Me Down. Happy was the first single. It reached 31 in the US, two in the UK, and three in Ireland. The album consisted of dance floor anthems, classic ballads, and more edgier tracks. And again, the songwriters and producers that Leona worked with were chosen by Simon Cow and Clive Davis. But what a lot of people don't know is that Leona worked with Timberland, but the song never made the album. She also did a few tracks with Tayo Cruz, and again, those songs didn't get on the album. Speaking of working with Timberland, Leona said, I went in the studio with Timberland and we vibed out. The thing is, on this album, there were a lot of people that I had been with on the first album, so I knew them and we kind of got into the vibe straight away. Obviously, I'm still getting to know Timberland. It's kind of a continuing and evolving relationship. So this time, he's not on the album, but hopefully next time he will be. Leona also faced criticism from fellow British singer, Jamelia. She allegedly told The Sun that Leona is a, quote, poor man's Mariah, saying she would probably disappear into obscurity like the other acts of Simon Cowes. And I read that she had called Leona's album old fashioned and sounding like something from the 80s. And apparently Leona responded by calling her insecure. The same year she released her album, she also released her autobiography, Dreams. On October the 14th, Leona went to a book signing at Waterstones in Piccadilly. She was meeting fans and signing copies of her autobiography. 90 minutes into the book signing, a guy stepped out from the line, went over to Leona and struck her in the face. A bystander said Leona ran out with her hand covering her face and the security jumped on the guy straight away. The police were called and the guy was arrested. Leona had to cancel a promotional visit to Germany for the following day. 29-year-old Peter Kowalczyk was arrested for the assault and was detained under the Mental Health Act in a psychiatric hospital. His father said that his son wanted to be a singer and had gone on various auditions and lined up for hours, but didn't get anywhere. In a statement, Leona said, thank you so much for your support. It is truly overwhelming. Yesterday was a horrible shock and left me extremely hurt and upset. I'm very sorry to those I wasn't able to meet at the signing. Thank you again for all the lovely messages. Love you all. The whole thing sounded insane. And to think that it happened to somebody like Leona, because she comes across as a very sweet person. So to think that somebody would, would do that to her. A lot of artists came forward in support of Leona, including Jamelia. I can't understand. I mean, there must be just crazy people around. And I, uh, clearly she's distressed. I think it's absolutely outrageous. Crazy. It's, the thing is, when you're in the public eye, People do strange things. That's the nature. That is the cult of celebrity. That's where we've got to. So Echo sold 2.5 million copies, which isn't bad, but compared to the first album, which sold 7 million copies, fans wondered why the second album didn't do as well. There was talk of the album being under-promoted, especially in comparison to the first. 
Apparently, a lot of people didn't even realise that she was about to drop a second album. It did get positive reviews from critics. The general sentiment, though, was that it lacked a little something. Leona Lewis missed out on the Brit again this year. But more striking than her loss to Lily Allen for the British Female Prize was the singer's complete absent from any other category. Neither her album Echo nor its lead single Happy were able to snag a nomination, despite the likes of Mama Do and The Climb getting the nod. Could it be that for all her undoubtable vocal prowess, Lewis just isn't getting the necessary support from the backroom boys and girls? I can't help but wonder what would have happened if she did work with Timberland, if she did work with more R&B and hip hop producers. But perhaps that's simply not her style and that's okay. It's important as an artist to be true to who they really are. Craig David tried to go down a more R&B route in order to appeal to the American market, but that seemed to have hurt his career. It appeared the UK garage sound that he was known for appealed more to people. In between her third and fourth album, Leona released a Christmas album. One More Sleep was the lead single from the album Christmas With Love in 2013. Every time I see artists cover their eye like that in photos, you know me, <laughs> I have questions. One More Sleep got rave reviews from critics. And while it wasn't necessarily another All I Want For Christmas, it certainly set Leona up to be an integral part of the Christmas holiday for years to come. Lewis Comer from Digital Spy said, One More Sleep is more heartwarming and sweet than a Christmas pudding and it's likely to become an annual Christmas staple song. Yeah, I was just like, guys, I'm not, you don't make me do this every single time. Don't want a lie for Christmas. It was the beginning of the end for Leona's time at Simon's label, Psycho, when her third album was released and flopped. By this time, she had began to speak out more. It was clear that she wasn't impressed with the route the label was taking concerning her career. She wanted more and believed she deserved more. So she parted ways with Psycho. I'm sure Leona respects Simon till this day and certainly didn't want to speak negative about him. But there was a sentiment of disappointment when discussing her time with his label and the inevitable happened, which was the final straw for her, was when the label offered her an album of covers, which let's face it, is kind of a career killer and is usually when an artist is on their way out. It's yeah, there's been a lot of change that had to be made, um, but it's all positive now. Because with Psycho, you'd had so much success with them, but yeah. then they got to a point where they sort of turned around and said to you, we don't really know what to do. And they'd asked you to do an album of covers, which you weren't up for. Yeah, they. I had had a, an amazing, amazing um, journey with Psycho. They, they, they've, and Sony as a whole had, had been amazing. Um, but I started off when Psycho was a very small label and it, you know, grew, which is amazing for them. But as it grew, I kind of was getting lost in everything a mm. bit. Um, and I just wanted to have, simplify things and, and kind of go back to the start of, of where I really come from and, and what I've always wanted to do. So You know, listening to lyrics, it almost like you could be talking about a relationship because mm. you felt like you felt trapped, you felt let down by them. Mm -hmm. um, and then you did actually liken this to a relationship as well. And, if and that's the thing, it started off amazing. Um, but towards the end, it just got to a point where I just needed to step out of it. And it It is. I do liken it to a relationship because that's what happens sometimes. You try and hold on for so long um, when you know you need to let go. Mm. And that's kind of what needed to happen. That's the thing. I, I'd been kind of toing and froing about what I should do and finally kind of taking the step to leave. Like it just took a lot of courage, I think, from me. Um, and and I, I, yeah, I feel like they were kind of shocked that I <laughs> actually left. So, Leona's fourth album was with a different label, Island Records. The album was aptly named I Am. 
Personally, my favourite album of hers, a very authentic sound. But that was seven years ago, and no new music since. But she has continued to perform and tour. She has since gotten married and had her first child, a little girl, very recently. And today, her net worth is reported to be $10 million. I Am did better than her third album, and it charted in the US, reaching number 38. She hadn't had an album chart in the US since her second album, Echo. I Am got four out of five star reviews and reached 12 in the UK. If she continues in the direction of I Am, perhaps she will win that Brit or Grammy after all. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below, you know I read the comments. Like and subscribe for weekly videos. And don't forget to click the bell for more.